things to people uh, under the pretense of that they had to have this type of treatment in order to be ruled. Was there some kind of a plan um, I've heard about for emergencies in case the organization was threatened or in case Jones himself was threatened? Well, in Planning Commission, where the counselors met for their uh, instruction every week, several times Jim Jones would say, I want you to go out and get some kind of government officials and hold them for ransom until they release me. This is the only way they'll ever release me. Also, we were supposed to be involved in terrorist activities along with that. Well, what do you think happened to the missing uh, 800 Jones? Well, I would imagine that the disenchanted people probably are hiding in the jungle right now, but I also know the effect of brainwashing on people, and I know that many of these people would rather die than face society as they view it from their very limited view that Jim Jones has presented to them, and that uh, they, I mean, I know because this is how we were programmed, I know that they are out to kill any person who has hurt Jim Jones in any way, and then kill themselves. There have been some reports that uh, some of the people uh, apparently were not were, were shot instead of committing suicide by poisoning. Do you think that? What do you think happened? There? Okay, the original plans, as they were being conducted down there, according to a notarized statement from Debbie Blakey, who did escape, mm -hmm. was that the people would all be fed poison, and then they would be shot. And uh, so I would imagine that this was probably started to be carried out. Can you talk a little bit about this, uh, some of the bizarre reports we've gotten of these suicide, uh, the suicide pact, the mass rehearsals, did that sort of thing go on down there? Well, yes, it did. In fact, uh, you know, they were talking about that in 1975 when we were still a member and when we were still <clears throat> up here. The most important thing to Jim Jones was that his name go down in history as a socialist revolutionary. And he was aware that if reports of what actually went on in his group got out, that he would go down in history as a madman. And so he wanted, it in the event that it appeared that his members would become uh, interrogated and might say what he didn't want the public to hear, he wanted all of those people to be dead so there would never be accurate witnesses to what had happened. But can you, what, what, what were these suicide drills we hear about? Uh, where he was, he wa okay, Jim Jones wanted to test you all the time. And so he would have fake suicides to see if you were really dedicated enough to be willing to die for the cause. Mm -hmm. And he would tell you that you were being poisoned or he might give you the poison first or the, the liquid first and then say that you had been poisoned uh, just to see what your reaction would be. And then afterwards he'd say, now this has been a test. And uh, the following people didn't react well. Uh, when the first suicide thing came in 1973, uh, there were a couple of counselors that just said, I refuse. And one of them was then called a traitor for months and months until he did a lot of things to atone for having refused. You say the first, did you go through this yourself? Could you describe your own experience? Okay, yeah, we never did actually take poison the first time. But what happened, we met, uh, it was an outside meeting, and he said, eight people have left. And uh, they're out there and they're going to discredit our group. And we've got to go down in history as a socialist revolutionary group. So we are going to all kill ourselves and we will leave a note that this is a demonstration because we can't deal with society as it exists today. We've been oppressed by the government and this is the only way that we feel we can deal with society is by making this demonstration. At that time, one of the counselors, Mike Cartmel, uh, stood up and he said, actually, Jim, I think that this would more look like we were a group of crazy people because the, the country would come up here and find all these dead bodies and they would just think we were crazy. And so uh, after that, he evaluated it and he agreed at that point that it, wouldn't be, it would be a crazy plan. Did any of you ever um, take something you thought was poison in one of these suicide drills? She did. 
Could you could you tell us a little bit about it? Were you convinced that in fact you were? Oh yes, I, I definitely thought I would be dead in 30 minutes. We had a PC meeting in the San Francisco Temple after a, a service. Uh, we we uh, Jim set the 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 atmosphere when he came in. We had to all be seated. When he walked in, everyone had to stand and do this, you know, to recognize that. He, to recognize that he was our benevolent dictator leader. Um, when was this about? Uh, about? This was about uh, two years ago. Oh uh, no, about three years ago. And uh, we were all, after we all sat down, when Jones walked in, he, uh, he had a big recliner that he reclined in with all kinds of food and things beside him. Uh, he came in smiling and he said, uh, we're going to celebrate tonight. We were not allowed to drink alcoholic beverages. He brought, uh, he, he had uh, two or three people in his confidence that he had told this was going to be a test, but the rest of us didn't know, and it probably was about 100 people in there that didn't know. Uh, they brought in paper cups and a big uh, jug of wine, and they poured half cups. And some people said, I don't want it because I don't like wine. And Jones said, I want everyone to drink this. It's good for you. So his his people, he had in his confidence, handed each person the cup and watched that they drained it. And all this time he was laughing and joking, you know. And then, after everyone had drank it, he said, now you have just drank poison, everyone in here will be dead in 30 minutes except me, and after I see that everyone is dead, then I will take my own life. But of course I have to make sure that everyone's dead before I can, well, we, I certainly knew that he was never going to take his life, you know. Um, people believed this so much that they actually started falling out of their chairs on the floor. They were conditioned to think they were dying, so they just more or less, you know, died psychologically, I guess. Um, I was sitting near the back in the aisle they had made for when uh, Jones walked through, and there, one of the planned people, uh, Andy Silvers, jumped up and said, do you mean to say I'm going to die? And Jones said yes. So two planned men jumped up and knocked him down beside my chair and beat him severely. I started to get up and beat him too because being conditioned, I couldn't imagine that someone would be such a traitor as to object to taking their life at this time. I was so brainwashed. I was watching and as he fell, he was supposed to apparently bite this uh, plastic bag of blood or whatever it was and look like he was splattered with blood. Accidentally, he dropped it and it rolled under my chair and I looked at it and I picked it up and I knew immediately that it was um, a test. So I just sit there and watched every, several people fall out of their chairs. This one lady that was one of um, Jones's angels, he called because he always said that we were taped by the FBI, so he used biblical terms for his hit people. Uh, Patty Cartmel, uh, he, she jumped up and said, I am not going to die. Now she was one of his most trusted. He was testing us to see who could take it. And apparently she couldn't because she was not in on the test. Um, one of his uh, planned people had a pistol and shot her but it had blanks in it, but she didn't know it. And he shot her so close that it blew a hole in her dress and she actually thought she was dead. She laid there. I wasn't sure about that. I said, now, you know, this man is really going a little far here to have a test like this. I have the bubble of blood in my hand, but that woman apparently is laying over there dead. The gunshot was extremely loud in that room we were in. Um, she wanted to run to her adopted child. The rest of us couldn't get up and go to our children, you know. At times, I would think, maybe this isn't a test, you know. I'd look at that. People were falling out of their chairs that possibly, all these people couldn't have been in on the plan and, and me not know about it, you know. I mean, there were like dozens of people slowly just crumpling to the floor. Mm -hmm. And uh, after, after he had enjoyed the agony of the people, sitting there enough apparently he said this is a test and i have what i wanted i watched the faces and i know who would be able to stand to go through with our plan he he did this uh sadistic things repeatedly at this time i was definitely disenchanted but my baby was in guyana and i knew that 
the only way that I would ever know whether he was alive or dead was to be quiet, keep my mouth shut, and hope that maybe once a year I could talk to him just to hear his voice on the radio in Guyana. This is my baby that I believe they have murdered. And um, I have, I certainly feel that they have because repeatedly, we repeatedly, we, we went through the tactics and the training that there is only one glorious way to go out, to go down in history, and that is to, no matter how long it takes, don't act rashly. Wait until you can accomplish this. Get those people that left. Get them. There, there's dozens and dozens of people that left. They had lists. Anyone that left, not necessarily from the regular congregation, but from PC, because PC knew the interworkings of the church, and, th and he couldn't possibly let any of us go out. PC is planning council. Yes, planning council for P People's Temple. And... Um, so we, we, we knew that if we left, the angels were to take care of the Heavenly Father's business. We, the angels, we, the hit squad? Yes, the, the, the hit men and women, which was his elite group. There was a PC within a PC. There was the regular, maybe uh, 140 uh, regular PC and after the regular business was taken care of such as how to compromise a congressman with a, a woman that was sent with tape and, and a, a camera. Um, um, senators, anyone that could be essential to the workings of the, of the temple uh, so that the people in the group could get high echelon jobs in society, bring in the big money. Uh, have a lot of clout, like uh, get a congressman or someone that was being elected on our side to, to do what Jones wanted to do, and then he would tell the whole congregation they must vote like this. We had to turn in our voting tags, and if anyone ref didn't vote, they were severely punished, so we, we had no choice. We knew definitely the one that left had no choice but to be murdered. Then. We were prepared to murder our children and then kill ourselves. There was no way out. Once you were in, there was no way out. How old is your son? My son uh, was nine years old when he went. He, is, he will be 13, January the 14th. What's your son's name? Thomas David Kais II. When was the last time you saw him? I saw him um, four years ago, December the 18th. With whom? He was sent to Jonestown in the very uh, shortly after the the mission was started there. You haven't seen him since. You I have not him. seen him who, since. Who took him? Uh, there were dozens of children sent at the same time. Have you heard from him? Uh, maybe three times. They allow you to talk. You see, over that shortwave radio or whatever it's called. Uh, Jones conducted his business and would tell people in code, like, um, if, if this happens, take care of birthday cake. Well, I'm just using that as an example. That was, it's time to hit or something. So he would speak for hours, and there's only certain hours in the day or the evening when the reception could come over. He would use up all the time, and the parents that were concerned about their children uh, if they would stand around for hours and when Jones would take care of his business, if there was two two or three seconds left, you might say hi and bye. What moves are you are you making to, to find out if your son is alive or to get him back? Uh, I am not making any moves. I am very definitely sure that unless my son was extremely um, lucky and able to get out of the group, you see, he then he is dead because it, it was always planned that we were put into a building and the children immediately, the children and the babies were immediately murdered. That would take care of that, get them out of the way. They, were, they would be okay then. Then we'd take care of the main business. Well, what is it? What is it about, um, about this, this temple, about Jones, that, that 
that got you all into it? What, what is it about him? What is it about the society? It, it sounds so crazy. It it is crazy. But when I first when I first met Jones, he was a, an adult school teacher at Ukiah Night School. Uh, I was going to night school. He he is a charismatic speaker. He has tremendous uh, charisma. He he knows how to speak, and uh, he attracts people with his dynamic way of speaking. He he attracted me, and he at that time he did not have a church or an, a large organization. Maybe uh, twenty five people were just meeting as a recreational thing, and we went and had picnics, swimming, and finally he decided that uh, at this time no one was allowed in except those he handpicked. Then he said, now we're going to branch out and make our mark known in the world. We are going down in history, people, so we're going to open our doors. We built a small church with a swimming pool inside to get around the tax thing, you know. But as these crazy things happen, these strange things, these perverted things, why did people stay with him? Why did you stay with him? Why did I stay with him? Because after the people started coming in, he, he knew that we were becoming disenchanted. As a test, he would say, everyone in this congregation, he would put guards at the doors. No one was allowed to go to the bathroom unless you raised your hand and he gave you permission. If he decided he didn't want you to, too bad, you sit there. Uh, old people, many of them urinated in their clothes and such things happened, which was a daily occurrence, which was not no surprise anymore. We became hardened to anything. Uh, he would say, we are having this um, uh, assurance of faith. Belief in me means nothing at all. You will never have to worry about it. These will only be in my hands. I would never betray you. At that point, we had had to call him father and Marceline Jones' mother, his wife. Our children were not allowed to call us mother and father. He was our benevolent leader, our, the highest. He was the deity. Um, he would say everyone at this time, at this particular time I'm, I'm speaking of, President Nixon was then in office. He said, these are the words I want you to write. And he would tell us word for word. I, Wanda Johnson, am prepared to murder Richard M. Nixon. I am a professed communist. I believe in a socialist uh, uh, society. I am willing to kidnap the highest officials' children, hold them for ransom or anything to get this accomplished. The date. We signed things like this by the thousands. We were forced to sign blank papers. Many high officials came into this church that very stupidly signed these blank papers. People's temple guest list, at the bottom there was a line and they were asked, would you sign the guest list? People would sometimes would look at it and say, uh, this is strange, why way down here what that blank means nothing. We're just going to put your name and address in here after you walk into the, to the building and we will later send you our folders and things. People did it by the thousands. You're, you're Al Mills, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'd like to 